Hi guys, how are you? Are you wondering what have I got in my hands? Well, these are a pair of shoelaces. But why am I talking about them? Do you know what are we talking about today? We're talking about names for everyday things that you have not heard. But you know that this is shoelace. So what is the confusion all about? But there's a part of shoelace that you may not know the name for. Okay, if you want to tie a shoelace, what is the most important thing? You know this plastic part at the end of the shoelace? If you haven't got it, it'll be really hard to tie your shoelace, isn't it? But usually if you want to talk about this, let's say that you don't have this in your lace. How will you describe? Oh, my lace hasn't got what? It hasn't got a plastic part? Or it hasn't got an aglet. Yes, that's the word that you use to describe the plastic part of a shoelace. It's called aglet. So how was that? A new word that you learned? Well, just like this, I have got for you today some very interesting nouns that you can use to talk about your everyday things. So let's get started and find out about some very unusual English words. My name is Michelle. You're watching me on Let's Talk. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to our channel if you like this video. Thank you. Let's get started. Okay guys, so let's get started. Here we have the first noun of the day with us. Why don't we start talking about different parts of our body? Yes, do you know there are some parts of your body that you don't know the name for? Well, yes. Let's start with one like this. Let's read this together. This is a Cupid's bow. Well, a Cupid's bow is pretty much a Cupid's bow, but it is also used as the name for a place on your face. Yes. So you know that space right between your nose and your lips. Yes. It looks kind of like this and then you have your lips. Doesn't that look like a bow? It does. Oh yes, it looks like a bow. And that's why this part of our face between the nose and the upper lip is called the Cupid's bow. So if you have a hairy Cupid's bow, it's time you get it clean and get the hair removed. So this is how you use Cupid's bow to describe a part of your face. And it's the name of the place between your nose and your upper lip. And let's look at the next one with that. Glabella. Well, this is also about a part on your face. And this one, let me tell you, is between your forehead and your eyebrows. So you see the space here? Yes, this part. So many people have a joint eyebrow. Have you seen people like that? Yes. I think I had to, okay. So a joint eyebrow usually covers your glabella, which means the space between your eyebrows and your forehead. Glabella is the space between your forehead and eyebrows. Perfect. Now let's look at the next word, wombul. What happens to you when you're very hungry? Does your stomach make a funny sound? Your tummy makes a funny sound? And sometimes you wonder like, oh, can anybody hear my stomach? Can anyone hear my tummy? Well, the sound that your tummy makes when you're very hungry is sometimes called as rumbling, but as a noun, to give it a name, it's called as a womble. Oh, my stomach just rumbled. Did you hear the womble? So womble is the sound that your tummy makes when you're hungry or when you have an upset stomach. So sound of an upset or hungry stomach is called womble. Great. Now let's look at the next one. Okay, this word is phosphenes, phosphenes. But to do this, to tell you the meaning of this, let's all keep our both hands on our eyes, like this. Now press it hard for 10 seconds. Can you see some lights flashing? Yes, can you see some lights? Now remove your hands and open your eyes. So whenever you close your eyes, you can see 
different shades, right? It's dark and you see some lights flashing. That is what is called phosphenes. Oh, you always wondered what that was, isn't it? So phosphenes are the lights flashing when we close our eyes. Okay, now still we are talking about our bodies. That's why let's look at another word which is related to our body. The word is minimus. Have you heard of the word minimum? Minimum is something which is the least, isn't it? Now look at your toe. Look at the little toe that you have, the final little toe. Do you know what is that little toe called? It's called minimus. The little toe or the little finger that you have on your foot. So how will you use this one? I know it might sound like really different, but if, you, if you're walking and you just bump into a table and you go like, oh, I just heard my minimus. Yes, that's where you're talking about your little toe and you can definitely add this new word to your vocabulary. Okay, now let's look at the next one. Mmm, dysania. So what happens when you wake up in the morning? You know that feeling? I always get it. I always have dysania whenever I wake up which means that I just don't feel like getting out of bed. Yes. So dysania is the name of the feeling which you have when you wake up and you don't want to get out of bed. So that is what is dysania. The lazy feeling when you wake up. So do you also feel dysania in the morning as soon as you wake up? Okay, well if you do, you have a word to talk about it now. Okay, now let's look at another interesting word that you may not have heard of is aglet. But you heard it. Yes, you just heard it in the beginning of the lesson. I told you aglet is the plastic part of a shoelace which helps you tie the shoe knot, the lace, the, the knot on the laces. So aglet is the plastic part on a shoelace. Make sure you don't pronounce this as egglet, but it is aglet with the long a sound and not e sound. So it's aglet and not egglet, okay? So aglet for you, great. Now let's look at the next word, bannock. Well, this word also has something to do with shoes. Since we are talking about aglet here, which is a plastic part of a shoelace, now let's talk about an experience where you go to a shoe store and you want to buy a pair of shoes. And the salesperson asks you to keep your foot on a particular device to measure your foot. Do you know what is that device called? That's called a Bannock device, yes. So Bannock device is the device used to measure your shoe size at a shoe store. So this is Bannock device for you. Well, most likely it must have been invented by someone with the name Bannock, and that's why we have the name of the device as Bannock. But this is something you can surely add to your vocabulary. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about language. Let's look at the next word we have. Tittle. Yes, it's not title, but the word is tittle. Okay, let me tell you what it means. Look at what have I made here. Okay, look at this one. What is this? It's a lowercase i. And this is a lowercase j. Sometimes when you're writing, you often miss making this dot over the lowercase i or over the lowercase j. But do you know what is this little dot called? Yes, this little dot is actually called a tittle. So when you're writing and if you don't complete your lowercase i, you might have missed drawing the tittle. Okay, so that's how you use the word tittle. Tittle can also be used to describe something very small. Okay, now with that, since we are already talking about language, let's look at this one, interrobank. So what is interrobank? Okay, what do you mean by interrogation? Asking questions? And whenever you write a question, what do you make at the end? You make a question mark like this. Now think of the sound bang. If you're writing bang, that's a loud sound. So what sign do you usually use? What punctuation mark do you use at the end of the word bang? Isn't it an exclamation mark? 
Okay. Now this is what is an interrobang. So whenever you have a punctuation mark where a question mark is followed by an exclamation mark that's called an interrobang, okay? So let's say that you're very shocked about something and you ask someone a question like, what, did that really happen? In the end, when you're writing, you can put a question mark and an exclamation mark. So you're shocked and you're asking a question. That's when we use interrobangs, okay? The next one that we have is related to music, vocables. So do you know that when you're singing or when you hear a song, some part of the song is more like la 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 la. So basically parts that don't have words in the song, but just have a sort of voice, na 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 na, or la 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 la, those are called vocables. So the na 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 or the la 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 in a song are basically vocables, to put it very simply. All right, now the next one we have is over morrow. So what are you doing over morrow? Well, this is another new way of saying day after tomorrow, yes. So this is a short, short new addition to your dictionary. Instead of saying day after tomorrow, try over morrow with your friends and they'll be like, what? You've got a good vocabulary for sure. Over morrow, it's another way of saying day after tomorrow. Okay, now the last one we have is my personal favorite. This is, how do you think we should pronounce this? Is it Petrichor? No, this is Petrichor. So do you like rains? If you love rains, you might even know this word. So whenever it rains, there is this earthy fragrance, you know, that aroma which comes out of the earth. And it's a beautiful aroma which is called petrichor. So the fragrance after rain is called petrichor, or the aroma released after rain. All right, so here we are guys. Thank you so much for staying tuned with me. I hope you found this video fun and useful. So here I have shared with you some very interesting names for everyday things which you may not have thought about before. So these are unusual and different and please add them to your dictionary and start using them. So thank you so much for staying with me. I hope you have a nice time and you go somewhere over tomorrow. See you soon. Bye-bye.